Life Practice Community. All right, <laughs> let's start our practice in a child's pose. We're going to come onto our hands and knees and then just rest our forehead. Take some deep breaths in and out. And as you breathe in and you breathe out, can you drop into this moment and drop into your breath and drop into your body? Taking a deep inhale and then a deep exhale. Deep inhale, deep exhale. See if you can arrive in this moment mindfully. And with compassion for yourself. Compassion for yourself for showing up. Compassion for yourself for just being here now and, and doing the best you can. The theme for our practice is Samtosha, which means contentment. I think a lot of us live in worrying about the future or thinking about the past. And that prevents us from finding contentment right here and right now. So maybe the intention for your practice today can just revolve around that finding contentment for, for the here and now. Can you take one more round of breath in your child's pose? And then in your child's pose, you're just going to walk your hands over towards the right and you're going to stretch through your left side body. And then take your hands all the way through center and then go over towards the left, stretching through the right side body. Come all the way back through center with the palms and then take a breath in, come up to your tabletop. And then from our tabletop, we're going to move through some cat cows. So on your inhale, you're going to tilt at your pelvis and lift your chin. And then when you exhale, you're going to curl your spine and tuck your chin. And then keep moving with your breath. Inhaling, tilting, and then exhaling, curling. Just kind of moving through the spine. And then just do whatever would feel good. So maybe you circle your spine around. Maybe doing a little C curve, kind of let the movement sort of flow in whatever way. Taking one more and then come all the way through center. Leave your left palm where it is. Can you reach your right arm all the way up so you're stretching through the side body? Good. And then how would it feel to thread your right arm underneath your left and come onto the right cheek 
and the right arm. And then maybe you lift your left arm up and then wrap it around the body, hooking it near the head. And then gently unwind through the left arm, lift all the way back up to a table, and then we'll go the opposite way. So lift your left arm up, take a big breath in, and then thread your left arm under, coming onto the left cheek and the left shoulder. And then maybe you lift the right arm up and hook it around the body. And then let's come all the way back through center with the palms, bringing your body back into a tabletop, centering through the palms, spreading through the fingers, and then tuck your toes and lift your hips up and back to your first down dog. Then through one knee and then through the next, just pressing out through the heels, rocking your head no, giving it a little rock yes. And then leave your left foot where it is. Let's lift our right leg all the way up towards the sky. So you're in a three-legged dog with just an extension through your right leg. And then pull your right knee in. Step your right foot between your palms. Nice. You can use your hand to get your foot there. And then how would it feel to rock forward and back? Getting into the hip crease. You got it. And then land onto the left knee and let's reach both arms up towards the sky. So you bring your body in an Anjaniyasana or a low lunge and settle your gaze forward. Reach both arms forward, leave your left palm where it is, pull your right arm all the way back. So you're opening your body towards the right knee maybe gazing over the right shoulder. And then let's bring our left palm to the inside of the right foot. So your right arm is extended. Your left palm is rooted on the inside of the right foot. Reach your right arm up and then either stay here or you might land your right palm on your sacrum. Maybe you might kick your left foot back and take your right palm and grab onto the foot, but it's just an option, an optional bind getting into your quad take one more breath and then release your left palm or sorry your right palm frame your right foot walk your fingertips back as you lengthen over the right leg taking a few breaths and can you just be okay with whatever shows up whether it's discomfort whether it's boredom whether it's whatever feelings are arising. It's part of our practice of cultivating samtosha or contentment is just being okay and accepting of whatever is. Take one more breath and then walk your hands forward and let's tuck our left toes and lift our left knee and then step your right foot back to meet your left. So you're finding your body in a strong plank. In your plank pose, you either land your knees or keep them lifted, just engaging through your navel, staying for three, for two. And then on one, you're gonna land both of your knees and then slowly lower all the way down, elbows drawing back. Take an inhale, lift at your heart gently coming up into a back bend exhale your way back down and then shift through a tabletop and bring your body all the way up and back to a down dog take a deep breath in and then a deep breath out and then we flow on the opposite side extend your left leg take a big breath in leaving your right foot where it is and then pull your left knee in, step your left foot between your palms, come onto your right knee, inhale your arms up. Find your low lunge. 
And then can you reach your arms forward, leave your right palm where it is, just spiral your left arm back so now you're facing your left leg. So your left arm is reaching back, your right arm is reaching forward. And then how would it feel to reach your right arm forward, landing it on the inside of the left foot, lifting your left arm up, gazing over the shoulder towards the left thumb. Now option one to stay here, option two, land the palm on the sacrum, and then option three, kick your right foot back, grab hold of your foot, gaze over the shoulder, coming into a quad stretch. Take one more inhale, one more exhale, release the foot if you have it, bring your left palm forward. You're gonna walk your fingertips back and lengthen over your left leg and then just take a few rounds of breath, hinging at your heart, diving deeper into the stretch, diving deeper into the pose, deeper into your practice. Walk your hands back all the way to the front of the mat. Tuck your right toes and lift your right knee and then step your left foot back again. So you're once again, holding strong in a plank for three, for two. And then on one, let's lower all the way down. So your navel is coming all the way down onto your mat and then have your palms alongside your hips. Take a breath in, you're gonna lift at your arms, lift at your legs, have your navel drawing in. So you're just in this um, locust pose. Your shoulders are lifting, your feet are lifting, your pelvis is heavy and your belly is light. Staying in this back bend for three, for two. And then on one, can you lower and then just rest a cheek? The next variation we are gonna take is either the exact same pose or you're gonna lift up and interlace your palms and then lift your heart. So either with your palms interlaced and you're lifting it behind you or with your hands alongside your hips, just staying for three, for two, and then one to slowly lower and then land a cheek. And then the next variation might be to kick your heels towards your bottom, grab hold of your ankles, and then take a big inhale, kicking your heart back, lifting into a bow pose. Just staying here for three, for two. And then on one to slowly lower, rest a cheek, and then just rock your feet from side to side. Taking one more inhale, one more exhale. Bring your feet back flat onto the mat. Push your palms underneath your shoulders. Let's lift up through a tabletop and then arrive all the way up and back into a down dog. And we'll move through one more standing flow. Leave your left foot where it is, reach your right leg up. If you would like to, you're gonna bend at the right knee and stack the hips. So you're reaching your right toes over to the left. Gently unwind, pull your right knee in, step your right foot between your palms, lift your arms all the way up, and then open your left arm back and your right arm forward, and then gaze over the right shoulder towards the right fingertips. This is your warrior two. Just settle the gaze. Drop into stillness. And can you just accept this pose and accept this moment for what it is? for any discomfort, any frustrations, anything that's coming up, can you just accept it?
Take a breath in, reverse your warrior, land your left palm on your left thigh, reach your right arm up, just stay. And then lift all the way back up to a warrior two, land your right elbow onto your right knee, reach your left arm forward. This is your extended side angle. And then options for your extended side angle, you might reach your left, your right arm up. So you're like holding onto this beach ball, or you might reach your right arm down on the inside of the right foot. Just choose a variation that feels right for you today. Knowing that there's no hierarchy in pose, there's no variation that's better than the other. So just choose the one that feels right for you. Knowing that yoga is not supposed to look good, it's supposed to feel good. So take a variation that feels good. Press through the feet, lift all the way back up to your warrior two, and then lengthen through your right leg, shortening your stance slightly. You're gonna reach your right arm as forward as you can, and then rock your right arm so that it lands alongside your right calf. Lift your left arm up towards the sky. This is your trikonasana, your triangle. And maybe you shift weight onto your right foot and your right fingertips and you lift your body up into a half moon. using whatever supports you need in your space, your wall, a chair, it's all good. And now if you want to, you might kick your left foot back, grab hold of your left foot. Good, just stay for three, for two. And then one, release your foot, release your hand, step all the way back, bring your body into a low lunge again. Good, so left foot is all the way back, right foot is forward, you got it. And then land onto your left knee, we'll reach our arms up again one more time, same sequence of poses we did at the start of the class. Reach your arms forward, leave your left palm where it is, peel your right arm back so you're opening into a twist towards your right thigh. And then reach your left arm forward on the inside of the right foot. Option one, you're here. Option two, your hand is on your sacrum. Option three, you're kicking back and grabbing hold and inviting in a quad stretch. And then can you release the foot, release the hand? And one more time, we'll walk the fingertips back as we lengthen over the right leg. And maybe you can move a little deeper into the pose this time. Just explore that. Explore how it feels. Being mindful with compassion. Walk your hands forward, frame your right foot, tuck your left toes and lift your left knee and then Step the right foot back so you're strong into your plank again. You got it. Holding your plank for three, for two, and then one. Move through a flow, lowering down, lifting your heart, coming all the way up and back to your down dog. Stepping your feet in, breathing in and breathing out. Lift your left leg up, three-legged dog. Bend through your left knee, stack your hips. Once again, just like we did on the other side. And then gently unwind your left leg, pull your left knee in, step your left foot between your palms. Lift all the way up with the arms. And then allow your body to open into a warrior two. 
settle your gaze. Can you find the middle between a really strong and intense warrior two and also a soft warrior two? Just find the middle between those two elements. And then land your right palm and reverse your warrior. Breathe into your left side rib cage. Lift all the way back up. Land your left elbow onto your left thigh. Reach your right arm forward, extended side angle. And then you choose where you take this pose. You might be here. You might have your left palm go down on the inside of the left leg. Maybe you reach both arms up overhead like you're grabbing hold of a beach ball. Just take it for three, for two, and then for one, lift all the way up, lengthen through your left leg, shorten your stance a tiny bit, reaching your right foot in, and then reach your arm forward and clock your left arm alongside your left leg, reaching your right arm up. And then if you want to, you might shift weight onto your left foot and left fingertips. And then if you want to, you might kick your right heel back, taking a bind, knowing that it's just an option on a menu of choices. I'm like a waiter. <laughs> None of the choices have to be taken, they're just suggestions. Release your right foot, release your right hand, land your right hand back on the mat. And then we step back with the right foot again, mindfully just landing your right knee and then inhaling your arms up, low lunge. Now, once again, reaching your arms forward, pull your left arm back like you're coming into a twist. And then maybe you reach your right arm forward, planting your right palm on the inside of the left foot, staying here, or sending the left palm back onto the sacrum, maybe kicking the foot back. And then release the foot, release the left hand, walk your fingertips back as you lengthen over the left leg. Just take three breaths. And then walk your hands forward, frame the foot. Let's tuck the right toes, lift the right knee, step your left foot all the way back, bringing your body into a plank. Moving through one last vinyasa flow. Lifting all the way up and back into your down dog. And then bend through your knees, gaze forward. Just hop or step your feet up to meet your hands. Coming all the way back onto your bottom. Lay your back body down on the mat. And then just press through the feet and push through the palms and lift your hips up so you're coming into a bridge pose. So your hips are lifted up, you're rolling the shoulder blades under, interlacing the palms, pinky side, face down. And then can you release the grip? Slowly lower your hips down. Take your knees into your chest. Give your body a nice little hug. Open your arms in the cactus arms. Just drop your knees to the right. Gaze over the left shoulder. And then pull your knees all the way through center. And then drop your knees over towards the left and gaze over the right shoulder. Coming all the way back with the knees. And then can you extend your legs long on the mat for a moment? 
So you're coming into like a mini little Shavasana with your hand on your heart and your hand on your belly. Take one more breath in that Shavasana. And then you're just gonna slowly make your way up to seated. So for our first yin pose, we're gonna bring our soles of feet together and let our knees knock open. And then take a big breath with your spine extended and then start to hinge your heart forward over the butterfly legs and you can come onto the elbows. Just letting your head dangle. If you wanna support yourself with a yoga block, go for it. And knowing that we're gonna be in this pose for three minutes. So can you take your time and just go easy on yourself? Allowing the pull of gravity to, to kind of gently invite you deeper into the shape. So this whole idea of Santosha It's about finding contentment right where you are. And I think all my life I have struggled with this. I was always someone who was looking forward to the next thing. You know, I can't wait until I'm a teenager and then I'll get to have fun and go out by myself or I can't wait until I'm in university and I'll have the freedom. I can't wait until I move to Kuwait and then I'll, I'll finally be happy. I'll be able to travel, I'll have this adventure. You know, I can't wait until this, can't wait until that. And if we're constantly living for the future and looking forward to something happening in the future, we're actually almost trying to escape the present. And that is what this whole concept is about. It's being accepting of the present. It's being okay with or content with the present. being content with or accepting things the way they are, things that are beyond our control as human beings. Let's take one more breath folded forward in this butterfly. And then can you just gently roll all the way up? Just bringing your knees in for a moment. So the next pose that we're gonna take is a forward fold on each side. So you're gonna leave your left foot on the inside of the right leg. 
have your right leg extended in front of you. Take a big breath in with both arms and then just hinge your body forward over the extended right leg. Again, supporting yourself. If your forehead can reach a block, maybe you have a block underneath your forehead. Propping yourself up in any way so that you can fully and completely relax. Again, with the knowledge that we will be in this pose for three minutes. So making sure that you find your personal edge. Pose that is not too deep, but also a pose that kind of brings you to somewhat of a point of releasing tension or releasing stress. Once you've found your edge, the next principle of yin yoga is to stay a while. So you really only get the benefit of the pose if you're releasing into it for minimum of three minutes. And then the next principle is to, to commit to stillness. So despite the tendency or urge to want to move, you're going to just stay. Stay for a few more breaths. And then gently roll all the way up to seated one more time. This time, bringing your right leg in and then just come into a crisscross for a moment, lengthening up through the spine. So this was an asymmetrical pose. Can you feel the difference from the right side compared to the left? And when you're ready, we'll come into the opposite side. So we're going to extend our left leg. 
Take a big breath in just to invite length along the spine. And then try to lead with the hinge at the hips instead of a reach through the arms. And know that there's zero destination here. Right, the goal is not to grab the foot or touch the ground. So don't worry about kind of meeting a destination. Just commit to stillness and stay a while and find your edge and, and see where that leads you. Staying on this side for just a few more breaths. And then can you just gently come all the way up to seated, bringing your body back into a crisscross. So we'll take one more pose before we drop into our Shavasana. We're gonna drop our right earlobe down towards our right shoulder. and lift your right arm all the way up, land it on your left skull. Just stretching into the left traps muscle.
finding and feeling your breath. You just take three more breaths. And then just land your right palm, lift your head all the way up. And then maybe you just rock your head from side to side. We're gonna drop our left earlobe down towards our left shoulder and then lift our left hand up, land it on the side of the skull. That's been part of this practice for me too. It's finding contentment with things as they are. Right, this is the way things are and I can't change that, I can just accept them. Accepting that filming this project is gonna take me double or triple the time. <laughs> and that's just reality. And can I be accepting of this reality and whatever comes with it? Not trying to change it. Take a few more moments. And then just land your left palm, lifting your head all the way up. And then taking your chin to your chest and doing a few circles. And then can you draw the head all the way back up through center? And then just slowly come back onto your back Extending your legs out one at a time.
preparing for your final resting pose. Your Shavasana. Placing one hand on the heart and one hand on the belly. Choosing a, a mantra or an affirmation to wrap up your practice. Maybe I am content in the here and now. I am accepting of the here and now. I am present with the here and now. Just know that I'm going to bring you back when the time is up. Please prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. 
sanctuary for you. Please prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Just give your fingers and toes a little wiggle. Running a nice long stretch, fingers all the way through the toes. And take your knees into your chest, give your body a nice little hug. And then just slowly make your way into a cross-legged shape. Bringing your hands to your heart center. Closing with the intention. And it's that our practice remain steady and our efforts remain continuous, and that our yoga serves and benefits not just us as individuals, but our society as a collective whole. May all beings be safe and happy and healthy and free, and may the thoughts and actions of each of our lives contribute towards this. So we'll finish with an ohm sound, and we're gonna inhale and exhale. Inhale through to make the ohm. So taking a big breath in, Big breath out, big breath in. Thank you so much for joining me for sharing this practice. I really appreciate and I'm so grateful for you. And I promise soon I'll be done this project and then you won't hear about my technical difficulties ever again. <laughs> but thank you for being compassionate. <laughs> the light in me, it sees and it honors. The light in you, namaste.